Are there any who are devout lovers of God? Let them enjoy this beautiful, bright festival. Are there any who are grateful servants? Let them rejoice and enter into the joy of their Lord. Are there any weary with fasting? Let them now receive their wages. If any have toiled from the first hour, let them receive their due reward. If any have come after the third hour, let him with gratitude join in the feast. And he that arrived after the sixth hour, let him not doubt, for he too shall sustain no loss. And if any delayed until the ninth hour, let him not hesitate, but let him come too. And he who arrived only at the eleventh hour, let him not be afraid by reason of his delay. For the Lord is gracious and receives the last, even as the first. He gives rest to him that comes at the eleventh hour, as well as to him that toiled from the first. To this one he gives, and upon another he bestows. He accepts the works as he greets the endeavor, the deed he honors, and the intention he commends. Let us all enter into the joy of the Lord. First and last alike receive your reward. Rich and poor rejoice together. Sober and slothful celebrate the day. You that have kept the fast and you that have not, rejoice today for the table is richly laden. Feast royally on it, the calf is a fatted one. Let no one go away hungry. Partake all of the cup of faith. Enjoy all the riches of his goodness. Let no one grieve at their poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one mourn that they have fallen again and again, for forgiveness has risen from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Saviour has set us free. He has destroyed it by enduring it. He destroyed hell when he descended into it. He put it into an uproar even as it tasted of his flesh. Isaiah foretold this when he said, you, O hell, have been troubled by encountering him below. Hell was in an uproar because it was done away with. It was in an uproar because it was mocked. It was in an uproar, for it is destroyed. It is in an uproar, for it is annihilated. It is in an uproar, for it is now made captive. Hell took a body and discovered God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. O oh death, where is thy sting? O oh hell, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, and you, death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ having risen from the dead, is become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen!
This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead, crushing the power of sin and destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvellous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God the Father. Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Friends with the Dean and Chapter, I welcome you to your cathedral church this morning. Once again, we can worship together with the richness of music and the glory of silence as we rejoice at the resurrection of our blessed Lord. You are welcome, you and the people you bring with you in your heart. You who are watching this service via our live stream, you are welcome. All of you are welcome as with the whole creation. We rejoice at the good news that touches every human being. As we stand, 
Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen.
that we may reign with the risen Christ in glory. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to those in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in return received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter to you all. I cannot tell you how pleased and excited I am to be celebrating Easter in our cathedral church. Last year, we missed our Easter celebration in the cathedral due to lockdown. So it is great to be back celebrating the resurrection of Christ in this magnificent space. The flower ladies have done us proud in decorating the cathedral with such a magnificent array of flowers and a wonderful selection of colour that depicts the new life and hope that the resurrection brings us. I too have brought my own flowers. As the preparing the Sunday Gospel material at home asks us to reflect on spring flowers. And as I write this sermon, 
I have some daffodils on my windowsill in my study. Daffodils through the ages have been seen as a sign of hope. They, like the snowdrops, give us hope that winter is almost over and that spring and new life is nearly here. Gary Bent, a modern British artist, who you may remember had an exhibition here in the cathedral before the first lockdown, kindly donated a beautiful painting to the cathedral after the exhibition. We were going to use the painting last year as part of our Lent and Easter devotions, but the best laid plans. We have, however, used the painting as a focus for reflection after each lockdown has ended. And the picture is now positioned by a pillar next to the shop as a focus of prayer and devotion as we begin to open up for private prayer. What the painting does is place the crucifixion of Christ on a hill surrounded by daffodils. Over the past year, as we have used this painting as a prayer focus, I have spent time reflecting on the juxtaposition of cross as an instrument of death and suffering and the flowers or daffodils in the case of Gary Bent's painting as symbols of hope and resurrection. As we reflect on the past year, we can also reflect on the cross as a symbol of the suffering of death that has occurred over the year. We have seen an enormous amount of illness and death over the past year as people have been infected with the COVID virus. We have seen so many people suffer through long COVID, through bereavement and through the loss of our stable environment. But COVID has also helped us to see the injustices in our world. The inequality between black and white people, the inequality between the rich and poor. We are yet to see the full extent of the economic crisis that will follow three lockdowns and the suffering that will bring as unemployment rises. Amongst all this suffering stands the cross of Christ. But what Easter teaches us is that amongst the suffering, God is with us. God is in the hands of the nurse or doctor who offer their hands to care for the most vulnerable. God is in the charity worker who strives to bring equality to those in developing countries who are a long way off from a vaccine. God is in the work of the scientist who wrestles with the complexities of a virus that keeps mutating. God is in the call of the Black Lives Matter campaign as we learn to live with and alongside those who are different from us. God is in the call for a better future that Pope Francis speaks about in his book, Let Us Dream. For me then, the spring flowers, represented by the daffodils in Bent's painting, are signs of a better world, a better future, where all are valued and respected as people created in the image of God. The flowers show us that God is with us not just in good times, but in times of anxiety, in times of sorrow, in times when we cannot see the future. As Rowan Williams, a former Archbishop of Canterbury said in his book, Candles in the Dark, Faith, Hope and Love in a Time of Pandemic, and I quote, in every moment, every encounter, in time of boredom, anger and anxiety, Jesus is with us, offering himself to us. He is present saying, 
this moment matters. It is a moment in which you can grow a bit or shrink a bit as a human being. It is a moment in which my love is there for you and my invitation to life is set before you. Your precious humanity is in my hands. Today, on this Easter day, when we celebrate Christ's resurrection, we remember Christ's promise to be with us to the end of time. The Paschal candle stands as a testament to that. All time belongs to God and that Jesus is with us in death as in life. He was with those first disciples in their fear and their anxiety, and he is with us today. So, on this Easter Sunday, as we celebrate the love given to us through the death of God's Son, let us pause as we see the spring flowers and give thanks for the hope that is to be found in the resurrection of Christ from the dead. God of life and resurrection, accept our thanks and praise. You lead us from the darkness of the cross to new life in your risen Son. Give us grace to know your Easter presence and to share Easter joy with those around us. For he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus, our exalted Lord, has been given all authority. Let us seek his intercession that our prayers may be perfected by his prayer. Jesus Christ, great high priest, living forever to intercede for us, pray for the church, your broken body in the world, for Paul and Beverly, our bishops, and for this cathedral church. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus Christ, King of righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the majesty on high, Pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and the leaders of all nations, that they seek to your gentle rule. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for us in our need, distress, or sorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection, surround with your saints and angels those who have died trusting your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, Send far above the heavens and filling the universe. Pray that we who have received the good news will proclaim you to all people with joy. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. In a moment, we uh, share the peace. We can't do it today by extending a hand and by touching one another, but we can share by bowing to one another or smiling at one another or using the British Sign Language sign for peace, 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 or by waving to one another. And in these ways, we share the peace of Christ with one another. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Savior and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, but chiefly are we bound to praise you because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly <laughs> Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross 
We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, together with all disciples of Jesus Christ in this diocese of Liverpool and across the world, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen jesus says i am the bread of life whoever eats this bread will live forever Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Heavenly Father, as we participate with your people in these holy mysteries, we pray you now to grant to all those who seek it your gift of spiritual communion, and we trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us, the blood of Christ shed for us. Amen.
Christ will come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of the enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you celebrate the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you all and remain with you always. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.